For now, I'd like to pass it on to Michelle Kolb from Tetra Tech. Michelle, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Uh, again, my name is Michelle Kolb, and my background is in environmental engineering. I graduated from California Polytechnic State University in 2014, and during my time there, I was exposed to the wide variety of environmental engineering and was really just kind of trying to figure out what, I, what direction I wanted to take my career. And throughout college, I was really involved with Engineers Without Borders student chapter, and it was really through that organization that I found a passion for um, international development. And when I was hired as an environmental engineer for Tetra Tech in Sacramento, California, in Sarah's Neck of the Woods, uh, I joined the local Professional Engineers Without Borders chapter, and I became uh, the manager for a water supply project in Panama. And at the end of last year, I was able to transition into Tetra Tech's international development sector, and I currently work as a staff associate for water resources and infrastructure projects. Uh, I help manage the USAID Water Sanitation and Hygiene Partnerships and Learning for Sustainability, or WASHPAL, project. And that project is identifying, researching, and sharing the best practices for delivery of WASH services and behavior change, uh, also while supporting USAID's goal of reducing morbidity and mortality in children under five. And that project is involved in about 10 countries throughout Africa, South Asia, South Asia and Southeast Asia. So I'll be kind of going into more detail about my experiences in Tetra Tech and Engineers Without Borders that really developed my career in international development and also kind of my observations throughout as a woman in STEM. So as I had mentioned previously, um, my participation in Engineers Without Borders or EWB in college is what really drove me towards a career in international development. So my second year of college, I really wanted to up my involvement in the club and decided to attend the International EWB Conference, which brings together volunteers from both the student and professional US, Mexico, and Canada chapters. So I found really being at that event surrounded by people passionate about using their technical background to solve the complex and unique problems that exist in the developing world really sparked something in me, and I knew kind of a direction that I wanted to take with my career, and I knew I wanted to do that type of development work. Uh, I, I found I was really attracted to the human and cultural component of Engineers Without Borders projects that other engineering projects lacked. Um, really, no matter how technical, technologically advanced a cap and capable a solution is, um, if it's not implemented with the consideration of the community members' opinions or their lifestyle, it will very likely not succeed. Um, and so there's kind of a fun problem-solving aspect to that. It's not just knowing the technical side, but also there's a really large human component to it. Not always a straightforward answer. Um, and I would say EWB as an organization is still not widely known outside of the engineering community. However, members are not required to be engineers. In fact, Non-engineers are encouraged to volunteer as projects involve much more than just engineering design, like community outreach, education, marketing, fundraising, budgeting, report writing. And so I really encourage, like I think that was a really key part to uh, my development of, the development of my international career was through volunteering with that organization. Because you're working on real complex problems and you can meet people within the sector um, that are working in international development and kind of start developing a network. And you don't, like I said, have to be an engineer. It doesn't matter what background you have. And there's plenty of opportunities for anybody in STEM in that organization. And really managing that water supply project in Panama helped me develop the skills unique to international development that contributed to my ability to really transition from domestic environmental remediation work into the international water resources and infrastructure. Um, and really a large part of my journey towards international development was through working for Tetra Tech. Um, and, you know, I really was initially drawn to Tetra Tech because of its reputation as one of the top engineering consulting firms. There's over 17,000 employees and 400 offices around the world working on domestic and international projects. Um, and I really knew more about their domestic side. Um, 
and their commercial services. But then as I started researching the company, I discovered it had a really strong presence in international development. And I kind of decided to pivot where I really had the intention of applying to Tetra Tech domestic sector really to try to maybe network and switch over to the international development side because um, we work internationally in areas of food security, infrastructure, conflict and stabilization, environment and natural resources, economic growth, and our key clients include USAID, State Department, MCC, UK Aid, AusAid, and multilateral development banks. So we're really um, a powerhouse in the international development world. And but the international development services really only makes up about a quarter of the company. And the rest, like I said, is providing commercial services um, in the U.S. and around the world. And so really my goal was to try to start as an environmental engineer for remediation projects and try to figure out how to transfer to the uh, international development team. And really how I would say I did this is a lot of networking and networking within Tetra Tech. Um, it's a large company, and I was able to meet people working in the international development sector, and they gave me advice on what skills to develop in order to transfer to that sector. Um, I actually met the woman who put me in contact with our international development office through a women in STEM event in LA. And so I've really come to realize it's all about how you, who you know. And it's putting yourself in situations uh, with other people in the development field to learn from them and to develop that, to develop that network. I first made the connection with Tetra Tech International Development Team in 2016, but didn't have enough years of experience to apply for an open position at that time, but I, I didn't give up. I kind of always kept um, it in my back burner, and I was given the valuable advice to focus on developing my project management skills, and through doing that, and then also continuing my involvement with Engineers Without Borders as a manager, and keeping contact with the connections I made, um, I was able to get hired into the international development um, sector with a job in Tetra Tech a, couple of year, a few years later. Um, so another really good piece of advice is also just um, think long term. You know, it's, uh, this is a goal that I've had in mind for a long time, and it didn't happen overnight. I really had to develop um, a network, and it's not even like I met that person and things happened overnight. You know, it really took some time. Um, and as a female in a male-dominated field, um, I really, I rarely felt intimidated by that. Um, and I attribute this a lot to the environment I grew up in and, and the strong women I was surrounded by. I just had a different perspective. Um, I mean, because it's, you know, when you grow up in a school for going to school for 10 years with a class of 14 girls and five guys, and the guys are all kind of goofballs that didn't care about school and the girls were all top of the class, I kind of just developed a sense that women are smart, organized, and driven, and the guys didn't really try. Um, and not to say that that's like an overarching thing that I have, but it, it was just, it, that really was kind of a setup of just kind of my understanding of always just thinking kind of women can do anything just as well. Um, and I also had brothers that would joke that I was like the only hope for our family is I was an honors and AP student with good grades, and they just didn't really care. Um, so, I mean, the takeaway is I really always felt like I could do great things, um, but honestly, the only one holding me back was myself, uh, not, not being female. And um, I've always had high expectations and the goals that I've set for myself. And I think I know many women that think that way. Are, um, and it really it wasn't because I felt like I had something to prove as a woman. I just felt I had something to prove to myself. Um, so I really think there's a key to develop relationships with women in your field that can serve as mentors and examples of confidence and success. You have to feel confident that you are capable of doing the job that you want. And I, I really think that if you surround yourself with inspiring, confident women, you just won't doubt what you can accomplish as a woman. Um, and so I think that's kind of the best takeaway kind of I would have for um, all the women in the STEM field. So thank you.